from the soundtrack of the film Barbershop, that is... We could say Philly affiliated. She didn't spend her entire childhood here in Philadelphia, but she's definitely attended the uh, High School for Creative and Performing Arts. Her mother, the beloved Professor Emeritus of Dance at Temple University, Brenda Dixon Gott's child. Uh, so that is Amel LaRue along with Glenn Lewis with a song titled What's Come Over Me. And we want to, of course, celebrate the spirit of film and television and music and all the things that uplift our cultural heritage as we are here celebrating Word Founders Day. Shout out to the folks that will be checking us out on Facebook Live. We, like I said, we got a lot going on that we're managing here. So forgive me if I seem a little scattered from time to time, but it is a celebration happening here at the Skyline Room of the Free Library Central Branch at 1901 Vine Street. Mike Dennis is in the house for Real Black Radio. Hey there, Steph. And joining us now at the broadcast table is Rodney Wittenberg and Palatine. For those of you who were with us as we were uh, broadcasting live at the uh, Blackwell Regional Library on 52nd and Sansom as a part of our Summer of Freedom uh, broadcast. You got a chance to hear from them, so we're glad to have them back Thank to you. share some more beautiful Thank music. You. Thank you for having us. And, and so, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk to and hear from you guys in just a minute. But in the midst of all of this, Mike, you've also invited some folks to uh, check in with us today that are going to be telling us about the good projects that they are working on or have worked on. Yeah, folks, I mean, abbreviated edition of Real Black Radio, but people should definitely stay tuned after Rodney my good friend Rodney, I've known, I've known Rodney for years and I'm excited about his project. Um, we have Sabrina Schmidt-Gordon is going to be checking in because mm -hmm. uh, as, as we know, uh, Black, both Black Star, I'm, I'm, well, Real Black and WURD are partnered yes. with the uh, North Philly sneak peek, peek of Quest and we'll talk about that. And then yes. uh, a guy I've only known through social media, but we have a very distinct connection uh, with uh, the late Bob Dick Gregory. He's going to call in uh, Ronald C. Hurd III. Uh, from We All Be, so stay tuned. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, this is a, uh, you know, this is a coming together of so many different things, and just culturally, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that as we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Walter P. Lomax Jr., one of the things that is one of my favorite memories of Dr. Lomax when he was with us is that when he understood how entrenched I was in our cultural community, he would always send me emails with uh, bits and pieces of information about historical uh, data. Like I remember, I still have uh, uh, an email he sent me about a black and white photography exhibit that was about the jazz scene in Pittsburgh and the Hill District. So, you know, we talk so often about fences and how, um, you know, the, the reality of black life in Pittsburgh was depicted so beautifully across a century in, uh, you know, th this 10 play series by August Wilson. And so, you know, anytime people are resurrecting that lost history and, and bringing it to bear, he would, you know, find these links and articles and different kinds of things and send it to me to make sure that I was well informed about these things. And, and that's just, those are precious memories. But it's also, Mike, you know, part of what you have done. And I think so often about the value of the archives that you've been able to amass over the years. In addition to the screenings that you do, you're also shooting. You're out in the community. You're gathering these interviews. And so this catalog that you have with Dick Gregory now has got to be priceless, really. Well, you know, I, I well, thank you for that. I, at the time, I, I didn't know that, and we'll, we'll, I'll share. I'll share more with Ronald about that. But yeah, it's certainly. I mean, we knew people were mentioning it at the time uh, when we were capturing and posting them that this is classic and legendary. But but uh, Baba Dick, you know, I, the way he took care of his body and his health, uh, you know, I thought he was going to make it to a hundred. I I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see him you know, like he was still working up until like a week before. Yes, the yes. Transition. The, the man was tireless, and and every day he woke up and and was for the struggle. So, so I, this was completely uh, unexpected surprise. But but yes, I think it's very important that we document our legacy, that we that we share our stories because, you know, if we don't, as as M M Mira Nair says, if we if we don't do it, no no one is. You know, right. so. Yes, I, I guess, yes, I, I would agree. The information there, we were very fortunate that we had the technology and he was open enough to share his wisdom, you know, so. And and just open people's eyes up to 
other possibilities, possibilities within ourselves and issues within our communities that, that need to be addressed. So, so yeah, uh, you know, it's where Rodney, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, some of, the, some of the stuff is interesting. I just read somewhere, did you know that the first polar bear was black? I heard something about that, yeah. I didn't, you know, black yeah. comes, you can't have uh-huh. black, <laughs> yes. you can't have white come from uh, black, but you can have black, white come from black or whatever. So the so first black polar bear. From, well, if all life starts in Africa, which we believe. Yes. I think he was from Africa. Then the first the polar bear. bear was found, his remains in Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we, we need to we need to honor the, this. The, the people on Facebook Live are looking at my raised eyebrow. You already know what I'm thinking about this stuff, right? <laughs> but but I, I want to you know in in the idea of uh, you know creating and connecting with history, I want to bring Rodney and Palatine into this conversation mm-hmm. because Nancy was with us uh, mm-hmm. towards the top of the program, mm-hmm. and we were once again talking about the timeliness of this mm-hmm. piece that you all have created because you know originally when you think about reflections on the civil rights movement we talk about trying to keep history alive Mm -hmm. and here we are at a time in history where some of the same epithets some of the same violence and misunderstanding is being perpetuated in our society so the fact that you all have contributed so richly to a cd project that Mm -hmm. people can use in their homes in their schools in their communities to engage in this conversation is is a beautiful thing Thank you. And thank you. I, I love that Lincoln Financial was willing to step up and get behind, not only get behind, but really was at the forefront of spearheading it. As Nancy probably said earlier, they wanted to celebrate the uh, 150th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation and the Gettysburg Address. Mm-hmm. And uh, luckily, they, they found me and I came up with a way of doing that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, there's some really powerful interviews actually uh, before. We got on the air. Mike Dennis and I were just talking about John Lewis, and he's actually doing a screening of a documentary about the sit-ins. And uh, there's just so many. I mean, I spent maybe an hour with him interviewing him, but there's just so much power in some of the answers that he had and some of the stories that I think are so useful to inspiring people to overcome the hardships that we're facing today. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, this idea of... uh, between screening films and creating films and um, and being able to contribute your voice and your lyrics to a, a process, you know, a, a project of this magnitude, it is... I, I feel there's no such thing as coincidence, <laughs> that everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And so, Palatine, you know, I look at you and I think that you have lent your voice in a variety of different capacities. Do you feel so, somehow that you've been divinely picked in order <laughs> to be able to sing on this project so that it radiates out? Absolutely. I'm with you. I do not believe in coincidences either. I feel like there is a divine order to just about everything we do. Sometimes it's an influence of man, but when Rodney asked me to be part of this Everything inside me said, yes, do it. There was no voice saying, no, think about it. You know, nothing. So when when something is that clear in my head, I'm like, okay. And I'm, you know, inside internally talking to God, like, okay, Lord, like, you want me to work with Rodney on this? This is bigger than me. This is bigger than us. And i honored and just feel blessed to be a part of everything that's going on. And that's a beautiful thing. Well, we want to take a pause from this for a moment to acknowledge Sabrina Gordon-Schmidt, who joins us now on the line, who is promoting, and Mike uh, will be screening through Real Black tomorrow, Quest, the documentary. Sabrina, welcome back to Word Radio. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Hey, Sabrina. Yeah, just to be clear, it's her screening, special sneak peek. Okay. At the that uh, you're helping to promote. W- yeah, yes. and W W R D, I believe, also as well. Yeah, it's I mean, you know, we're we're all, we're all in the same but, gang. Yes. <laughs> and and yes. our fellow gang member Sabrina <laughs> let, let people know about this event, which actually is tonight and tomorrow, but. I was going to say, and certainly because this this film is near and dear to our hearts because it features one of Word Radio's own. That's right. That's right. So um, Chris Rainey, uh, a.k.a. Quest, is um, sort of the star of the film and his family. And he's um, he's often on WURD with David Barnes, who is in the film um, as well. And, yeah, so we're having like a community screening. It's a preview screening of the film before it opens um, uh, officially. And we wanted to do that uh, specifically for 
the North Philly community and um, sort of like the word community in general. Um, because we felt that, you know, after filming the film for like um, 10 years, it was a really important, in North Philly, that North Philly get a chance to, to see the film. We premiered at Sundance and we've been showing the film all over the country. And, you know, we felt it was time that North Philly get to get to see the film too. So we're having um, a really special sort of like community event uh, to which all are welcome where um, we're filming the, we're showing the film but particularly I want to talk about tomorrow afternoon where we're doing actually a matinee screening at 11 and then following that around one o'clock we have community workshops that um, are sort of organized around some of the themes that come up in the film so there's a lot of stuff around um, manhood and family and making music and hip-hop and healing and all kinds of things and so there's something like for everyone and they're like about an hour each and so they start about one to four o'clock and um, every you know all is welcome the people is for all ages and it would be really um, you know it's just kind of like our way of saying thank you to the community and trying to community to uh, contribute something to the community for um, um, for the time we got to spend with them and to and to film and so on. Yeah, well, this Sabrina's so humble. This is kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're bringing to the community a movie that that won what the audience award at the Sundance Film Festival, right? Well, it, it, no, we won actually. We won grand jury prizes and, jury. and uh, audience prizes and so on. And lot, we didn't win at Sundance. It was very. Okay. You would think that we did because it was very popular at, at Sundance. I mean, it was really an honor state. to to uh, premiere at Sundance. Um, and we subsequently have won awards, as, so was like as I said, like throughout the throughout the country. So and it was gotten like really, really wonderful like reviews and variety and 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 so on. So it's a, you know it's really an honor right, so. to be putting. To, uh, yes. Yeah, so. uh, you started. You started like, to break up. Way. Yeah, oh, you hello. started to break up a little bit, Sabrina. They can't handle. Oh, can the you truth. hear me now? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's better. better. Okay, That's sorry about that. Yeah, and no, I was just saying that it's just really an honor for us to be putting North Philly on the map in this kind of really powerful and positive way. So, yeah. yeah so I really different... hope, you know, um, uh, we have a screen tonight at um, at 8 o'clock. And, oh, and it's happening at Church of the Advocate. I should point that out because it was really important that we have it in North Philly, you know, in, you know, in you know, our backyard. And so that Church of the Advocate has been really great and supportive. Um, of the film and enthusiastic about presenting it. And, um, yeah, so um, hopefully people can come out to the screening tonight at 8 or even better, come out uh, the, uh, tomorrow for the matinee. And definitely whether you come tonight or tomorrow, come out for the, for the workshop. And all the information is on your word, uh, is on the WURD work website. Yes. And I, I want to just take a moment, though, to also talk about the power of documentary film, because sure. I, I say that, you know, documentarians among us are a special masochistic sort because people do <laughs> not understand necessarily the the, you know, kind of hoops that you have to jump through and all that you have to coordinate in order to try and capture our lives as they are happening in real time. And this is not your first time around the rodeo. So, mm -hmm. you know, make right, sure that right. you let our audience here in the Skyline Room and people who are listening at home know a little bit about the projects of yours that they should be looking for and they should be familiar with because you this is something that you do for the love and that you give this love back to the community in being able to see these wonderful stories about our lives. Right. Oh, no, no. Definitely. Thank you so much for acknowledging that. Yeah, because documentary is not like you know, multi-million dollar Hollywood film budget type filmmaking. It's a very different kind of uh, animal, so to speak. It's a lot of grant writing and raising money and, and making a lot of sacrifices to tell stories that we, you know, that we and I, and me in particular, I mean, this is why I do, do it, is that I want to do, make films that I think can make a difference in, 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 in the world and people's lives. And, um, you know, I've made films, I think it's my third film uh, that's based in Philadelphia. The film that I made right before this is a film about the great Sonia Sanchez called Bad Sonia Sanchez, poet laureate of Philadelphia, uh, yes. Philadelphia rock star, rock star to the, to, you know, <laughs> civil rights everywhere. Yeah, and um, yes. I'm happy to say that, like, it's, it's been nominated for an Emmy. And so we'll find out, yeah, we'll find out next month. The, the Emmys are next month. And. Um, that was really, again, another acknowledgement that, you know, is re I'm really proud to, to, um, to have been part of that project and to br uh, bring uh, Sony's story um, to a, a larger audience and to get that kind of recognition, I think, is great, not just for me, but really for Sonia and, and for all of us, really.
because we yes. know the power of her work and what she's contributed. And, um, you know, I, so I, I you know, and I'm always making films that, that tend to be about, you know, community and social justice and, and, and art and politics, sort of like kind of interconnecting those um, worlds together. So, um, uh, Sonia Sanchez, the film, because it's been nominated for an Emmy, will probably re- be rebroadcast um, on PBS. So I certainly will let you know when that happens um, so you guys can all check it out. Yes. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on everything. Uh, you, Thank and, you so and that much. kind of dovetails into what we opened with in terms of the need to document our culture yes. and tell our yes. own stories. And yes. uh, you're def- definitely a champion of it. And Quest is the latest yes. of, of those you. manifestations. And, and, you know, again, if even if people, it's not on your radar yet, this is a perfect opportunity not only to see it before everybody else, but to see it for free within yes. the community. You're yes. going to see a lot of people that you know. North Philly, stand up and show up. Make sure that yes. you're coming out to support Sabrina, support Quest and David Barnes. Be in the house to celebrate this story of triumphing over, you know, I mean really, really difficult circumstances and the power of the community to continue mm-hmm. to uplift people that are going through th- that are in the midst of the storm. That's what That's really what, what this is, is all about and we're so glad that you were able to capture it that you thought enough of the story of what was unfolding in this to capture it and serve it back to us so that we can all remember how resilient we have the power to be and how necessary that is yes and i have to give a a shout out to the director john opseski a philadelphia resident who met uh quest over 10 years ago and started off just taking some photographs of him and then recognized that there was something much more um, happening and much more to, to capture and document and to share. And he actually committed 10 years or more, really, of his life um, on this project um, and, and filming them and capturing their story and really, you know, was very committed to telling the story in such a way that was really honoring and um, and sort of nuanced. Um, and I think, you know, we... we we did good. <laughs> yes. I say so myself. So I hope you all come out and, um, and you know, North Philly come out. This is really for you. So. Indeed. Well, thank you for making some time for us on the air today. We wish you to have, you know, completely filled uh, screenings as you are sharing uh, this film with the world over the weekend here in North Philadelphia. And please make sure you keep Word Radio on your radar as you continue to create more works and release them into the world. Oh, my gosh, absolutely. And don't forget tomorrow, Saturday workshop, come out, check them out. You'll probably find something that will be really um, inspirational for you. Thank you. Indeed. Again, ladies and gentlemen, that is Sabrina Gordon-Schmidt, Quest, the documentary screening tonight at 8 p.m., workshops tomorrow as well. Her previous film, Bad, Sonia Sanchez, nominated for an Emmy, also capturing what we are doing, you know, the beauty uh, and the history of all these phenomenal folks we have here in Philadelphia. Fantastic. Right on, right on. Indeed. And that is what we're going to get back to. We're going to take a quick break and come back. We're going to hear from Rodney Wittenberg and Palatine. We're going to hear from uh, Ronald Hurd. Ronald Hurd about Baba Dick Gregory. And we're going to keep the cultural conversation going as we celebrate Word Founders Day here at the Skyline Room of the Central Branch of the Free Library at 1901 Vine Street. You still have plenty of time to come down and be a part of the live action or keep your dial locked here on Word Radio. 96.1 FM, 900 AM. We'll be back with more after this. I forget it. I wish I'd met him. Giving you a little taste of the late, great Al Jarreau, along with Metropole Orchest, recorded live in the Netherlands with just a little bit of a scatting beginning of the Duke Ellington piece, I'm Beginning to See the Light. And I I wanted to use that to bring us back in because there is something about the urgency of now that we need to acknowledge as we gather together today at Word Founders Day to think about the life and legacy of Dr. Walter P. Lomax Jr. and the impact impact that he left on us as a station, as a staff, as a community, and those principles that he held dear that we are uplifting today. We also want to think about how, uh, what a rare opportunity it is when we have an opportunity to sit in the midst of greatness and whether we are capturing those moments.
moments on video or uh, on recordings and resharing them with the world that we, as these legends, uh, you know, get a chance to be in our midst, we cannot take that for granted because we never know when they will be called back to another plane to do other work. And so we need to basically acknowledge the idea that we capture these conversations and these moments as we can and we continue to share them with the community as we are able. So we were able to spend some time with Al Jarreau when he was here two years ago as the guest of the Man Music Center doing master classes with our students, teaching them about jazz and about finding the jazz within them. And of course, uh, Mike Dennis is here and we were talking earlier in the uh, segment about being able to capture Baba Dick Gregory um, in this, uh, you know, these moments where his vibrancy is so necessary and the lessons that he taught us about activism and cultural history are important. And we have a guest on the line that shares that with you, Mike. Yeah, we'll get, well, let's jump right into it. So with us on the line is uh, our friend, a co-, co-, uh, co compatriot, I guess, yeah. trying to think of the vocabulary <laughs> that exists that to introduce Mr. Ronald C. Hurd from uh, We All Be TV. How you doing, man? It's an honor to be on, brother Mike, and with your co-host. It's definitely an honor. Yeah, well, I mean, we had talked. I mean, we we connected. We have the mutual, um, I guess. Uh, I don't know. You know, was just the the beauty of being able to spend time with Bob Dick Gregory, and <laughs> and uh, we had just we talked about like collaborating or being on each other's shows prior to this, and it's it's kind of a bittersweet thing that this will be our first opportunity to really share. But I, I, I love and respect what you do, too. For those who don't know, what is We All Be? Oh, We All Be is an is a organization. It stands for World Enriching, Activating, Liberating, Love, Beautification Experience. I was inspired, yeah. actually, by Sun Rock to pursue this path. I'm a big fan of Sun Rock. I know y'all stay on no headquarters out in Philly. Y'all know about the Sun Rock experience. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you, you, you bill yourself as the activist. Which I love. Oh yeah, I'm just an activist plus artist. I mean, Dick Gregory was an artist. I mean, you are an artist. Anybody who used their creativity to help uh, empower people uh, who are for social justice and uh, positive social change, to me, they are artists. Right, and you see, and you start. How did you? How did you first connect with Bob and Dick? I'm curious. Well, I was uh, recommended by Marcus Jones, the father of Michael Bell of the Gen of Six, which was the how ten years ago, which is incredible. Uh, he told me to get in touch with Baba Gregory. And so I actually called the number he gave me, and a, a lady answered the phone. I think in hindsight it was Lillian, but she's very shy. And sometimes she might pretend to be somebody else. That was <laughs> 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 what Baba Gregory would tell me. So uh, she told me the number to, you know, fax in the request. But I actually waited three years later to do it, you know, wow. uh, back in 2011. And something just you know, went across my mind. I need to just go ahead and get in contact with this elder. Because every time I saw him on the um, State, of, State of the Black Union with Tavis Malley, mm-hmm. he always sold the show. You know, yes. that was like our black Super Bowl back in the day before we had a black president. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it, Everybody it has a- in. Chemtrails. <laughs> <laughs> Organ stealing. <laughs> he, he got, he, you know, one, one thing, you, you know, his presence... There's no, there's no way you you could uh, not experience Baba Dick Gregory even you know at any stage in his life and not come away enlightened and changed in some way. Yeah, he was definitely a holy man. I mean, we, me, you, uh, me, brother Mike, we probably a special club. The folks he loved to curse out and cuss out and show out on. <laughs> so we stood in for the people though, because people would ask me questions and ask him. Now I just take the brunt of it because I know it's bigger than me. Because what we did, brother Mike, was special. We actually. Educate a whole generation of new soldiers. For That's the, right. By sharing this information. And God's how it looks on us. We stood in for the people because it spoke to his frustration. Because how good it was, how, what a blessing was that for Baba Gregory. We were hearing what uh, Ambassador Andrew Young said recently on Meet the Press. Two mm-hmm. elders, mm-hmm. right? Two different points of views. Both was with him. Right. But some stay, stay true to the course, the others just, you know, another path. But that's another story. Right, but but I think you you were luckier than me because I mean you started out on Blog Talk Radio, getting cussed out. <laughs> so yeah, by I, by the time you got to the video cameras, you kind of learned 
the way to navigate it a little bit better. My, Mike, I, wasn't, I in, Mike I, wasn't prepared to become I was a meme. A sheep. <laughs> Ronald, he wasn't prepared to become a meme. He didn't even know that it existed until somebody emailed it to him, and then he realized. I didn't that, ask you that. Be yeah, a part of his cuss out <laughs> has now been immortalized and gone viral. Oh <laughs> but but oh, yeah, I mean the, le- the lessons like, learned though, yeah. like you said, are far yeah, more important. Lessons learned are far more important than any any of that because the passion's there. I mean, what? I mean, too. I mean, so what are what are some of the lessons that you you take away from? So I just want to say, Mike, we are pioneers. Somebody had to sit the table before you to come along to order to help the blueprint on it. So I feel honored to be a part of that legacy. We both are part of this mm-hmm. legacy, which is a living legacy. And like I said, Baba was a holy man, man. He though he cussed a lot and he acted fool and turned it up, as they say. Uh, he had a message. He was full of substance always. He was always about the love of the people. Uh, he talked about being a soldier, uh, being down for the cause by any means necessary, being committed to something larger than yourself. So I learned that from him. And also being willing to give, because there's two types of people in the world, really. When it comes down to it, it's the givers and the takers. And Bible was the ultimate gift. Yeah. He gave yeah. so much of his time. He can't get the time back. He gave so much of his wisdom, his talents, his energy. Uh, he put everything on the line for what he believed in. And I, and I think that's what gave him energy. Yes. I think I think uh, it just came, it just circulated back into him. Like, you know, I mean, and I guess the enlightenment for me was this this man woke up every single morning, you know, read stacks of newspapers. And when we first met him, you know, there was another room and it was just covered with that, that day's newspapers. Mm-hmm. And then you go back and you look at video and TV of him in the 60s. He's at a newsstand buying newspapers. I mean, you know, and just to see through the cracks of what what now people are starting to say mainstream media. But he's he was well ahead of the game, as they say. So, yeah. So you know, cause, cause you can't you can't consider anything that uh, Bob and Dick shared without uh, affecting the way you think, the changing your way of seeing things. So. He was a thought provocateur, number one. He definitely was a thought provocateur. He, he provoked you to think. And uh, I always say that knowledge is a currency of the universe. And he said that information is power. And he said bad information is bad power. Good information is good power, but it's power nonetheless to be in the know. Indeed. And Ronald, I got to ask you, I love the lilt in your voice. Where are your people from? I'm from Oak Memphis, down Mississippi Way, South Carolina. Uh-huh. Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> little mix there, like, you know, the whole great migration thing. Yes, indeed. Well, well the, and that's part of the reason why I asked because I think it's also important for us to understand that. You know, we I, I, and and this is something that I have really embraced because I've been doing my own family history research. But this idea of the places and spaces where we have gone and yet and still there's a universality to some of the way that these uh, world events and national events are impacting us. And so right. the fact that Mike is here in Philly and he's representing and you're in Memphis and you're also capturing these conversations and trying to capture these moments in time and you now have this archive to be able to share with us is important because we've got to understand that we are not in our own little silos separated from what's happening in the world, that it is a a universal kind of coming together that is necessary for us. And so you being able to share your conversations with Baba Dick and Mike being able to share his as well will give us some treasured uh, memories that we can call on as we continue to fight injustice. I definitely agree. I didn't. I never thought I was gonna be, you know, signed up for this type of assignment. I know Brother Mike didn't know what he was getting into as well. Uh, we never know because we doing the work. We doing God's work. I ain't talking about going to church every Sunday, and Wednesday, but you doing the work you was meant to do. And when you yeah. do those type of work, uh, opportunities uh, continue to manifest itself. Yes, sir. And when you doing what you're supposed to be doing, you get all types of favor. Right, and I mean, you, so you definitely know. to be a part of this club with Mike. Yeah, I'm mean, amen, and and the transformation. I mean, things. I don't know. I mean, you continue to. I mean, we've only we only did three sessions, but you you pretty much had him on every month for a while. When was the last time that you oh, saw him so or, or filmed him? Up. Yeah, it was like on the anniversary of Dr. King's death in Memphis, 49 years ago. I mm-hmm. talked to him April 4th, 2017. There's a couple blocks away from where Dr. King was crucified. His wow, Dr. King. So, I mean, it was very prophetic. I mean, I didn't even think about what I was doing because I just assumed that Bobby would be around forever like everybody else. Yeah. He'll never die, right? I thought he'd be back for the 50th of Memphis, but he only made it to the 49th. 
and he was like a prophet. Like the way he looked, he was like a, a Old Testament, you know, prophet. Mm-hmm. Telling all the things, because people kept on saying he got it wrong. He got everything right. Mm-hmm. He'll put you in the right neighborhood. He might not get you in the right house, but he'll put you in the right neighborhood and the right zip code. And he <laughs> wants you to do the rest of work. He did so much for us already. And mm-hmm. he was like, you know, he lived a lot of them 84 years. A lot yeah, of living yeah, in yeah. 84 years. Yeah, you have to you taught you to listen and uh, and people the people they say it's parables. I, I just think you just have to filter mm-hmm. your information because every everything there's passion and truth and everything that ever came out of his mouth. And you know you may you may certain things may attract you to the information, right. but then if you look at it again and again, here's somebody that spoke it who marched at Selma who who took turkeys you know down down during the civil rights Medgar Evers just just a real direct connection to history and never he was the inspiration for Freedom Summer too uh, brother Mike he was the inspiration for Freedom Summer 64 they better right. say he was the March inspiration on Washington all this stuff so I, I, mm-hmm. I know you posted information about his home going uh, on your Twitter uh, what, what can right. we share before we let you go well basically you know his home going to be September the 15th through the 17th it's going to be a week long a weekend celebration out of this world beyond category as Duke Elton used to say. So I hope I meet you, Brother Mike, in person there, because it's going to be extraordinary. I can't share the details, but it's, what's going to go down that weekend, that's going to be phenomenal. Okay, well, I'll, I'll connect with you or, or Brother Glenn Ellis, who's a dear friend, yes. and uh, I'll make every effort to be there. But uh, and, and, yeah, just more, spend more time. Maybe that's an opportunity for us to really connect deeper. So I, I thank you for taking the, the moment to share your thoughts and and just uh, uplift and, and shine that light on Bob Dick. You know, he definitely is an inspiration and will be missed. So. We love you all, man. Keep on doing the God's work. Indeed. Thank you so much, Ronald. Mm-hmm. And again, that's We All Be TV. Yeah, so, on so we want everybody to look that up. Look up uh, Mike's catalog on Real Black TV of the conversations with Baba Dick Gregory. So much of this idea of the passing down of wisdom is embodied in the conversations that we will continue to engage at today's Word Founders Day celebration. We've got a wonderful crowd here in the Skyline Room. We know even more of you are tuned in at home. We want to thank those of you who checked in with us on Facebook Live. We are going to take a brief uh, break and then we are going to come back to some more live music that talks about this connection, our past to our present and we're going to invite to our microphone Dr. Malefi Asante who's in the house who has some reflections on Dr. Lomax's life as well. We're going to keep the good vibes going ladies and gentlemen. Keep your dial locked here on Word Radio 96.1 FM 900 AM. Hello and can we get a, a big whoop from the folks in the house? That's how it is. We got a wonderful crowd here in the Skyline Room. If you are still making your way, do so carefully. But we look forward to welcoming you in the house. And even more activities will be continuing as we continue our Founders Day celebration. Stay tuned. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a little taste of Moxie Priest with a song also featuring vocals from Shabba Ranks. It's called House Call, and we provide that to you just to remind you that one of the perks of being here today or coming in and celebrating with us is that if you are beginning or renewing your forward membership, you are also entered to win a four-night, four-day, three-night trip for two to Jamaica. So we're going to be celebrating with a little reggae as we are here today. Just to remind you, that's one of the perks if you are our lucky winner. But we want to conjure up all of those good vibes as well, because many people are familiar with the idea that Jamaicans ask, are you feeling iry? Right. Are you all right? Are you good in your spirit? And we and we want to (laughs) we want to encourage all of that health, wellness and goodness in everyone that is joining us here live at the Skyline Room or listening in at home to our Word Founders Day celebration honoring the life and legacy of Dr. Walter P. Lomax Jr. This is Stephanie Renee. This is our mojo also celebrating our Summer of Freedom finale. We've been celebrating literacy all summer long as we've been traveling in and out of libraries throughout the city of Philadelphia uplifting the idea of being lifelong learners. So it doesn't make a difference what age you are. We want you to pick up a book. We 
want you to go online. We want you to invest yourself in being full of news and information as we give out here on the airwaves at Word Radio as well. And for those of you who are still making your way here to join us, we're asking you to bring a children's book because we are conducting a book drive today. The beneficiaries of your generosity will be Dignity Housing and Connection Training Services, two nonprofit organizations that service families and youth homelessness in our community. Not everyone can afford to buy books and build up their own libraries. So for those of you who have more than you need and have had, you know, well-loved and gently used books that you can donate, children's books in particular, we're asking you to bring them down and make those donations today as you join us here for this celebration. And as we talk about this idea of connecting generations, building literacy, passing along history. Rodney Wittenberg and Palantine have been joining us. So those of you who are checking us out on Facebook Live have been able to see them for the last hour. Now we're going to get a chance to hear from them because they have contributed to this wonderful project that we've been talking about, financed by Lincoln Financial Foundation, We Stood Up, Reflections on the Civil Rights Movement, and in addition to, of course, Rodney as executive producer, getting a chance to sit down with legends like uh, Congressman John Lewis, um, you contributed original music Mm -hmm. to this project that reminds us that even in the midst of the storm, that there is love and there is connectedness that we need in our community. So tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, some other reflections on on what being a part of this project means to you. And then we would love to hear a selection if you don't mind. Well, um, wow. Just being part of this project, um, it, it speaks to my soul. You know, it speaks to everything that uh, I feel I'm about as an artist and as an uh, activist and person. And it was just really amazing and powerful to be able to um, not only uh, sit with all the interviews and pull out excerpts and put the script together, but then be inspired to create all the songs yes. that are on the CD. Um, and um, again, it's a CD because we, we recognize that... Um, when you're listening to something, it's an activity. A lot of times people ask me, why isn't it, a, why do you make a film? And I go, well, watching is sometimes uh, a passive activity where listening is very active. Yes. And so our, our goal and dream is that parents will put the CD on when they're riding in the car on a long trip or uh, teachers will use it in a classroom. Um, and um, maybe during study time or quiet time, they can put the CD on and kids can hear directly from those people who were there on the front line of the civil rights movement what it was like and what they overcame and how they not only survived but thrived yes indeed Mm -hmm. so what selection have you prepared to share with us we're gonna do the same song we did our uh last time we were here so so for those of you (laughs) who were not tuned in when we were at blackwell we get a chance to repeat some of the beauty that you can find again on the we stood up project and if you're headed down here in order to join Join us at Founders Day. We have copies of the CD available for you. Listen, we have folks spray painting bad words on schools and cars and other things in our community, just like our ancestors experienced 50 years Mm -hmm. and beyond. And so this material is more relevant than ever. And we want you to use these tools that are available. There are uh, uh, study guides and other teacher materials or uh, elder materials, Mm -hmm. we can say, that are available for free download from the website where this uh, material is also available for community leaders and what have you and so use this CD use the electronic files to be able to engage our young people in the reason why there are words that hurt our spirit that there are experiences that our elders have gone through that we don't want our young people to have to deal with anymore but we've got to collectively work to eliminate this scourge of racism from our society and so with the interviews and the music we get a chance to get a live performance from mm-hmm. Rodney and Palatine. Yeah. So uh, this song uh, was inspired by the interview with John Lewis. Uh, I, I had asked them uh, just why, what, he, what, what drove him, what gave him the strength, particularly as it led up to Selma. I asked him, what did you do the day before? <laughs> he goes, well, I got a new suit and <laughs> I got a book 
<laughs> toothbrush, <laughs> an apple, because we wanted to have something to eat. And I go, what went through your mind? You know, you're standing there at the top of the bridge, and you know what's going to happen next. How did you do it? And he goes, it was love. He goes, it's it, it's that love that comes from the Almighty, the the, the, the source. Yes. And he, he said he felt it, and he continues to feel it, and that's what gave him the strength to be able to stand there and take the dogs and the beatings and all the stuff he went through. And... Um, one of the things he said to me, which was so powerful, he told the story about how, uh, I guess it was maybe 40 years later, he was in his office, and a guy came in with his son, and he said, Mr. Lewis, I brought my son here, and I wanted to hear him say this to you. I was one of the guys that beat you, and I'm sorry. And I've changed, and I can't tell you how ashamed I am of myself, and I'm sorry. And I thought, wow, that is just so powerful that... that John Lewis was able to do that because of the love that was inside. So that's the inspiration for this song and here it goes. I'm gonna take that anger and write it down March into town Can you hear the sound? I'm gonna take that anger and Turn it around and turn it into love. I'm gonna take that doubt and write it down. March into town, can you hear the sound? I'm gonna take that doubt and turn it around and turn it into love. Love, 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 love. Turn it all into love. Love, 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 love. Turn it all into love. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take that mistreatment and write it down. March into town. Can you hear the sound? I'm gonna take that mistreatment and turn it around and turn it into love. I'm gonna take that fear and write it down. March into town. Can you hear the sound? I'm gonna take that fear and turn it around and turn it into love. Turn it all into love, 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 turn it all into love, 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 turn it all into L-O-V-E, love, oh, love, love, turn it all into to love, love, oh love, love, turn it all into love, love, oh love, turn it all into love. Give it up for Rodney Wittenberg and Palatine. That is track number 13 on the project We Stood Up, Reflections on the Civil Rights Movement. It includes the voices of the Honorable Shirley Franklin, former mayor of Atlanta, the Honorable John Lewis, Philadelphia's own Sonia Sanchez, the uh, late Julian Bond, uh, captured one of the final moments that he got a chance to share his own reflections. Dr. Bernard Watson, there's so many venerable elders included on this. Most of them were interviewed by young people. So they got a chance to interact with a whole new generation and talk about what it was like when they were youth in the struggle and what they want youth of today to know about that journey and how we can continue that energy in a time where some people might say more than ever. Mm -hmm. We need a revision 
of these tactics and of the love mm -hmm. that was necessary to propel people forward in order to create change in our world. Gentlemen, thank you for sharing thank that beautiful thank selection. You, and we want to continue this idea of how we learn generation to generation and how we learn from our peers as well about how to address the struggles that are in front of us. Joining us also at the broadcast table is one of our venerable elders in our community who has dedicated his life to teaching us about our history and also to continue to groom the next generation of scholars who are doing the research, who are continuing the conversation about what it means to be African, African-American, and also know our history so that we can embody those principles and carry them forward. Dr. Malefi Asante, thank you for joining us, sir. Hey, thank you very much, Stephanie. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank Indeed. You. And, yeah, and good to see you. And we know that you wanted to share some thoughts yeah, about yeah. Dr. Walter P. Lomax Jr. Yes, please. I, yes, I did. And I'm just so happy to see all these people here. And I just hope others will keep coming. Uh, this is a wonderful day. Um, uh, I want to share, I want to just first of all tell you that uh, when you were talking earlier, Stephanie, about the uh, contest and about Jamaica, I, it made me think of the time that I was with uh, 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 Walter Lomax and, and Beverly uh, at their place in Jamaica. Yes. Uh, Abacus. And uh, ha having, to, having, having uh, a wonderful uh, breakfast sitting out there. Uh, on the on the porch with Haki Matabuti and and his wife Safisha and my wife Anna, and we were talking uh, about the things that Walter Lomax loved to talk about, and that is how can we transform the African American people? That was really his topic, and he was like an elder brother to me because um, he always said that it's not enough to tell black people what to do. What you have to do is to bring African American people to consciousness and they will determine what to do. If people are conscious, they will know what to do. That, that was his idea. So what he appreciated, I think, in me was the historical piece. The, the fact that I, I love African American history. I think it's the fundamental story in America, that there's no story in America as noble as our story. And Walter Lomax understood that and he appreciated that. And he would always say to me, you know, uh, if he had an idea, uh, what do you think about this? And then sometimes he would say, look, I'm going to North Carolina to see this uh, uh, African-American businessman. I want you to go with me. Just, you know, so mm -hmm. just meet me at the airport. I mean, he was, <laughs> that's the way he was. He was uh, that kind of individual. And so to come out anytime to honor him, I, I would do it anywhere and anytime because he was one of the greatest human beings that I've ever met. Uh, he loved, talk about love, he loved African American people. He loved the community and he felt deeply for the community. And that love for the community was what gave him the strength that he had as a philanthropist. I mean, when people start talking about philanthropy, then they start talking about somebody who loved people and said, I know we can transform some of the people. You can't transform all of them. And he understood that. But you can transform some. And some will understand and they will take it. So Walter Lomax is a genius and in a book that was written called African American Traditions actually written by me and and, uh, and um, um, uh, Bill Spivey uh, about two years ago we have a whole chat we have a section on Walter Lomax and uh, the book has not uh, been distributed as widely as it should be but it was because we really want it to have people to understand something about the dignity and the respect and the love and the value that this man had for African-American people. And I was just really, really, really happy to be able to come here and to say something about him and about the way he loved us and about WRD because word is really an organic institution in the black community. And it's a basic uh, 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 institution, and we should all support it. I'm so happy to see the congressman in here, <laughs> my good friend Dwight uh, Evans. I'm so happy to see him. But it's really great to, to know that somebody like Walter Lomax lived among us, and not only lived among us, 
but he was extremely valuable to this community. And he was part of the, the foundation of, of this community. And so to see WRD continue the work that he started, it pleases me very much. I'm delighted to be here. But you, you don't get off that easily because one of the things I want people in the room to know and people who are listening at home to know when we talk about legacy, part of the legacy of Dr. Lomax is his children and how they're continuing to carry on his Absolutely. vision in many ways. I can't tell you how tickled I was when I got a chance to visit the National Museum of African American History and Culture that we have nicknamed the Blacksonian. Yeah. (laughs) And in my visit to the Blacksonian, as we get to the uh, section about contemporary activism, they have some video panels in that section for those of you who have not been there. (laughs) And I see Opal Tometi, one of the founders of the Movement for Black Lives. I see Jay Smooth, who is uh, an activist and a comedian. And on one of the other panels, we see MK Asante. And so I want want you to talk yeah. a little bit about that this yeah. idea that you know you have steeped yourself in african-american yeah. history and in teaching it to other people and now your son yeah. has picked up the mantle and is continuing to carry it on in in the same way that the lomax family is carrying on their fa- their father's vision well, well it's it's a tradition and it ought to be a tradition i mean um uh, my son mk uh, asante is an individual in his own right, and he has done many, many brilliant things. And in fact, he will continue to do them. He is, of course, a filmmaker. Uh, he went to UCLA for filmmaking, and he, he came out of UCLA as a, as a filmmaker, but he's also now a producer of music, and uh, that is his big thing, as well as a professor at Morgan State. So he's a professor at Morgan State. He's a producer. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's in the video uh, and he's traveling all over the world uh, with his message. Uh, he's just come back from, I think it was, uh, I can't even keep up with him, Botswana. But he's been Botswana, Angola. Um, he's uh, all, all, over, all over Zimbabwe. In fact, I'm on my way to Zimbabwe and, um, and uh, South Africa for the Steve B. Co. anniversary yes. uh, in two weeks. Yes. Uh, the, this is the second time that the South Africans have asked me to come and give the Steve B. Co. lecture because of uh, consciousness, because Steve B. Co. was the father of black consciousness in South Africa. And of course, that's what I talk about. Afrocentricity is about African-American consciousness, how we are agents ourselves, that we ourselves are responsible for ourselves and we are accountable to each other and that we can do things uh, our own way and we can do things that we're not just victims or not just marginals to everybody else. We are actors and we are activists and we are people who make history. And my my son has taken that challenge uh, very much on his own. And uh, so I thank you very much. But I, I was just as shocked as you were, Stephanie, when I went to the museum, I was going to the museum, walking through the museum, and I get to that last part, and I see that panel of those young people, and there he is. I say, how does he get <laughs> no, no, but it was very nice. He's, he's there, and he, he does a good job. He's yes, a very, young, very wonderful young man. Well, we, I, just, I wanted to mention that while I had you here, embarrass you well, a little bit, uh, but also talk about this idea well, of family, well, how these lessons yeah. that we say are crucial to our community also rely on the foundation that we can give them because of our that's ties right. to one another. And, that's the, and, and, and WRD is a great example of that because uh, uh, Sarah Lomax Reese has really uh, championed this whole idea of carrying on the legacy that her father had uh, left. And that legacy is a very powerful one. And it is always one of grace and elegance and one that demonstrates what African-American people can do and what we have done. We will continue to do that. And this, uh, this station is uh, integral to what we have done with the Malefic Kati Asante Institute. They have supported us. They have given us time, given us space. And, uh, and we've purchased space. But we also have just enjoyed just being able to come to 
WRD and say, look, we got this program going on. We got these things going on, this research, this speaker, supporters, support us, and they have supported us. So I want to thank you. Thank you all. And I want everybody to know also in the community, uh, I, I'm still, I haven't retired from Temple. I'm still at Temple. I'm still head of African-American studies. We got 34 PhD students from all over the world studying at Temple. Uh, we have produced 172 PhDs, more than any other uh, department, uh, university in the country. Uh, black people, this is 172, and they are everywhere. They run the program at Cheney. They run the program at Lincoln. They run the program at the University of Pittsburgh. These are black people who've been trained at Temple. And then all over the country, Colorado, Michigan, these people have left Temple and have gone to run these programs. So in a way, we have produced more black PhDs than any other institution. And our department has produced more than any other African American Studies department. So we're, we're happy, but we've been supported uh, by the community. The community has supported us, and, uh, you know, we've been uh, from time to time uh, always uh, uh, coming to the community uh, uh, to support the community itself. And that is what uh, 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 Walter Lomax taught me. And, and as, as, as I said, uh, many times we, we would be out to, uh, we'd be at dinner or we would be at breakfast or whatever, and he would be talking about not only his work uh, as, a, as a doctor, because as a medical doctor, I mean, he, he, he was a medical doctor to Martin Luther King Jr. on an occasion. But be, beyond that, his idea about uh, using your profession to transform the African-American community. If you can't be engaged in the process of transformation, then you really are not doing what you're supposed to do as an African-American. So I just want to thank you, Stephanie, Renee. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Dr. Asante. That's how we're doing it here at Word Founders Day, ladies and gentlemen. We're bringing in our trusted voices and our elders. We are grooming the next generation and giving them, equipping them with school supplies and books and other things that will enhance their lives. And we are inviting you to continue fellowshipping with us as a community, as your time allows. We've got Got a great crowd here in the room. We say hello to all of you at home. We're going to say goodbye to those of you who are checking out the Facebook live feed right now. But we've got plenty more coming at you at our special live broadcast here at the Central Branch of the Free Library. More in a moment. 